Welcome back to Secret Weapons, and today we're taking a look at The Raster 2 by Red Panda Labs. It's hard to know where to start when talking about The Raster. Um, if you're familiar with Red Panda at all, you probably know that they have a reputation for being a somewhat inscrutable brand in our space. Um, a lot of their devices, almost all of their devices, the tensor, the particle, the bitmap, they, they're all pretty intricate and complex and honestly a lot of the use cases like the basic use cases of a lot of these devices is so non-traditional in a lot of ways that uh, you kind of have people raising their eyebrows and going okay but what what does it do and today we are going to try to answer that question for the raster which i think is probably why this video is over an hour long i we haven't edited it yet but i have i have a feeling it's going to be a little bit of a marathon today so let's separate that question into two parts what is it and what does it do? The raster, and I guess technically the raster two here, is a digital delay 
with other stuff. Really what it is is a digital delay, stereo digital delay with a shift control that allows you to add pitch shifting or frequency shifting to the repeats in the feedback loop. So that's what it is. But like, let's talk about what it does. What are the implications of pitch shifting and frequency shifting in the feedback loop of a digital delay? What does that look like? Well, what you end up with is something that does pristine digital delay repeats, as well as pitch shifted repeats, both cascading or singular, uh, forward and backward. A wealth of interesting modulation options because of that frequency shifting and like minor detuning abilities that this thing has, as well as an incredibly strong two band modulation engine with a wealth of waveforms that you have access to that can be targeted either at your delay line, the amplitude of your delay itself, or the parameters on that shift control. We're not gonna talk too much about what all that means in this portion of the video, because we are about to spend a lot of time digging into the different uh, parameters and their, and their results uh, when we go to the top down camera. So let's just, let's put a pin in all of that and talk through kind of what you would use something like this for. And the answer is a lot of things. The feature set on this thing is so robust. You have MIDI clock, you have stereo ins and outs, you have multiple delay lines, you have the ability to offset your two delay lines in a variety of ways to create like, I think like eight different instantiations of stereo width in this pedal. It is the most versatile delay pedal I have ever played by a wide margin. It's one of the best delay pedals I've ever played. It's, it's hands down the best digital delay pedal I've ever used. You can use it for everything from your standard dotted eighth, straight down the middle delays, stereo width delays, ping ponging delays, pitch shifted delays an octave, a fifth, a second, whatever you want. You can also take that delay time to zero, take that blend knob all the way to 100, and use that transposed shift functionality to do things like make a faux bass or an octave up. Like on the intro, the bass part that you heard wasn't a bass, that was just my guitar pitch shifted down in real time with the raster. You can also do that in reverse for glitchy real time reverse effects. There is so much weirdness that you can do with this pedal. You can use parameters of this thing to create chorusing and flanging and phasing uh, modulation types in this pedal that can be as wide or as narrow in the stereo field as you would want them to be. Nearly every single switch and knob on this pedal has a secondary uh, control accessed by holding down this waveform button right here. Uh, which makes me very glad that there is a USB port up top that gives you access to a web editor that is really good. It is a very, very good web editor and we'll dive into that at the end of this video. So again, we're not gonna talk too much about how to do things in this portion of the video. We will get to all of that in terms of real world, real time building examples, as well as a bunch of presets that I have made that highlight some really cool things that this thing can do. So instead, let's just talk about my impressions on this for a couple of minutes and then we'll get to some sound samples. And I can tell you, this is phenomenal. I have been a kind of long distance appreciator of Red Panda for years. Um, I actually owned the first version of the bitmap, um, honestly, probably five years ago at this point. And it was a really cool, bizarre bit crushing pedal that I really liked and should not have sold. Uh, but I was, I was more of a broke person than, than I am now. But the Tensor has been on like my, like, bucket list of pedals for like years now. I've been trying to like trade for one and grab one. Someday I'm going to get one, I promise. It's every time I use it, it's like one of my favorite pedals I've ever played. Uh, I'm really impressed with a lot of what Red Panda does. I never really looked very seriously at raster version one because I just have not been a digital delay person historically. And this thing has really, really done a lot to sway me on that. This thing is going to become a staple on my board and in the studio because it's so, versatile, it's so useful. The ability to center your delays right in the middle of your stereo field, make them pristinely ping-ponging left and right, or just to add progressive amounts of stereo width or any combination of like left-right subdivisions that you want, gives you so much versatility. And to be able to apply all those same things to a reverse delay, to a pitch-shifted reverse delay, to a pitch-shifted reverse delay where the modulation is offset in the opposite direction as your ratios. Trust me, we'll get into it. This pedal is intricate, it's complicated, it, it really takes some manual reading, which I've done a lot of in the last couple of days. I have kept the manual and a set of notes 
on my iPad for the entirety of this video, just as a reference point. But again, the desktop editor's control is so useful and the preset management that the desktop editor affords you the ability to do to quickly organize and save your ideas as you go, just deeply helpful. MIDI is a huge deal on this thing. If you're using something like this, or if you're looking into this, I highly recommend having a MIDI controller as well. Although you do have access to four presets on the face of this pedal right off the bat, just by scrolling through this preset button right here, which is actually what I used to make my first couple presets. This thing is great. I highly recommend it. Uh, Red Panda, thank you for sending this out. This was a joy to make. I really, really can't say enough good things about the raster. Let's, let's start just diving into all of these sound samples. I've decided to parse down to a simpler board for this portion of the video. There's so much going on with the raster. There's so many things it can do, so many applications that it has that I don't want to muddy the water with um, effects that cover a lot of the same ground or uh, pair really well with the raster, but might um, confuse what it is that we're actually doing. So we've got a board that doesn't have a microcosm or a mood or a blooper or any of the other kind of like crazier effects that I've got. We're just going super simple. Uh, I'm playing my Harmony Silhouette into my Empress Compressor Mark II, the Benson Germanium Boost into the raster where we split to stereo into the Revelation Reverb by Jet Pedals and the Walrus Audio ACS-1 for our amplifiers. So here's what that context, here's what that clean tone sounds like. We're going to split this section of the video up into two parts. Um, part one is going to be a run through of five presets that I have made for the raster that I think showcase really interesting use cases for the pedal that kind of do a good job of, exp of, of showcasing the wide variety of sound you can kind of pull out of this device. And then the next section will be actually going in and really kind of digging into the feature set, turning the knobs, flipping the switches, using the web editor to kind of unlock the full potential of this pedal. But for now, we are just going to run through my five presets for the raster, um, scrolling through them using my Morningstar MC3 you see below. It should be said that this first thing you're gonna hear doesn't count as one of my presets. I made preset one on this pedal a full reset, quote unquote, which is basically just a single mono digital delay with no modulation, no pitch shifting, no stereo width of any kind, there's so many features and um, sub-menu functions on this pedal that can get really, really hard to find your way back home sometimes if you're not careful. Uh, so I like saving preset one as a full reset. So if I'm trying to dial up a new sound, I can always jump back to that first preset and know that I'm starting with a clean slate and then I can save whatever I end up coming up with to a different slot in the pedal. So here is, doesn't count as one of my presets, but is my preset one, the straight up, core digital delay sound in the raster. Okay, let's head up to preset one. So preset one is what I like to call faux bass. This is a um, zero delay time, octave down, uh, forward delay, essentially just completely zeroing out my dry signal and replacing it with a single repeat, an octave down in real time. And it's just a bass. It should be worth noting, how good is that tracking? You'll get the occasional artifact here and there, but generally this thing handles chords in a pitch shifted environment better than most.
keeping that idea of uh, unison pitch shifting like that. Uh, this preset is what I call uh, build your own power chord. Uh, let's just play single notes. So as you can hear, it's the same thing, but instead of full wet, we're at 50-50 50, uh, blend between our wet and our dry, and that shift is set to transpose up a single fifth. Okay, let's get into something a little bit more complicated. So let me explain what's happening here. This is a wide reverse delay, super slow delay time. Um, transposing down a fifth with a random envelope of modulation. The, uh, the modulation waveform that we've chosen is like a random square wave, uh, but it's not modulating the delay, it's modulating the amplitude of the delay uh, randomly, so different repeats are coming in at different volumes. By the way, I love the way that uh, the delay artifacts get shifted into the next preset. I think it so often can be so musical, like what we just heard in that really brief moment. Uh, we are up to our next preset, uh, preset three, I believe. Technically four, but we're calling it three because of the live, the live mode one. And here we are kind of doubling back towards something a little bit more normal. Uh, this is just a uh, an approximation of a wide stereo chorus analog delay. So we are running. Um, our modulation, it's just a simple sine wave, uh, but set pretty pretty carefully. When, when, when we start digging into the, the modulation engine in this thing, you'll understand why. Um, and then we are offsetting uh, the target of the depth of the modulation to the left and the rate of the modulation to the right to create a nice, crazy, wide thing that isn't ping-ponging. <laughs> modulation kind of waving from left to right.
modulation on this thing can be really hard to get right a lot of the time because it's got so much potential and so much like kind of strength behind it but when you get it it's it's really beautiful Speaking of that modulation engine and kind of why it's so robust, uh, let's jump over to preset number five, the last in these presets. Let's kill the reverb for a second so you can really hear what's happening. This is a uh, wide stereo tap tempoed delay. The uh, delay taps at a quarter note. The modulation is a square wave, but the modulation's destination is not the delay time uh, to modulate the pitch of the delay, but instead the amplitude of the delay, kind of like what we were doing earlier with that big reverse one, but instead of kind of randomly selecting incoming volume for delay repeats, this is actually creating a really choppy tremolo um, at a dotted 16th alongside the quarter note. So your modulation will stay locked in as a subdivision of the tap tempo of your uh, actual delay line. Okay, I want to take things slow with this part of the video. We'll kind of add things in as we kind of iterate towards a more complicated delay. Uh, but even in the raster quick start manual that comes with the pedal, as well as the full length manual on their website, uh, they, they talk about how to start things off to kind of understand the pedal. And that's essentially what we're going to do here, which is 
uh, bypass the shift control, turn off the modulation, put blend, feedback, and delay all at noon, and kind of start building from there. So let's kind of start things off by just exploring those three uh, parameters, as well as the tone control, which is the only sub-menu thing we're going to dive into at this point. So uh, let's hear our basic tone again. And let's bring in that raster. All right, so blend will take you uh, from very subtle to full wet, which is really great. You can hear you start to get that dry tone roll off right around here. And then full wet. One thing that I really like that Red Panda did here is uh, on that feedback control to give you a notation on where infinite repeats is. So you're not going to get runaway oscillation here, but you will get forever repeats. This is a great time to play with the delay too, because you have access to a non-pitch shifting, but a like very time stretching uh, version of twisting that delay control. a lot of really cool textures with that, which I think is really interesting. Um, okay, in that, in that, as we're playing with that delay time, let's jump over to uh, the first switch that we're going to play with on this thing, which is this guy right here. And that switch is your different delay times that you have access to. So at any given time, you can tap in whatever delay time you want between zero and 320 milliseconds. Um, but but you've also got that thing, which gives you different uh, amounts of delay that you can that you can dial in on the delay knob itself, giving you kind of progressively wider and more granular granular control. So on the left, you've got from uh, Unison. We'll just take it to max right there. Oh, and it's worth noting, um, as we've just discussed earlier, there are some parameters that are accessible via MIDI or the web editor that aren't available on the faceplate of this pedal. Uh, and this is the first of those uh, in the order that we're gonna be running through, which is there is a fourth position in that that gives you 320 milliseconds of delay time, um, which is just over three seconds, which is really, really great. But we don't have it right now. Uh, we'll jump into some stuff with the web editor at the end here, and we can hear some of those samples. I do really like these like wide, these are like long delay times.
Okay, while we are exploring this as a basic delay, let's start playing with uh, another sub uh, with our first submenu option, which is going to be the tone control. So on that feedback knob, we have the ability to go, uh, we can darken or brighten up the repeats by adding either high pass or low pass filtering. We'll turn up the feedback a little bit. So we'll dial it back uh, right around 930 for something that just kind of like rolls off as it as it decays. You can get some really great dark repeats in here though. This tone control is also incredibly useful for uh, those like infinite repeat uh, loops. So you can kind of get like almost like a sound on sound thing. Kind of take it up to infinite, get a nice long delay time. And then uh, let's just fade in some like volume swell and some notes. like really aggressive low pass filtering will help uh, fade those out and allow new notes to kind of sit on top. Let's uh, roll over to that high pass version. Now let's slightly high pass the incoming notes. go okay let's start adding in modulation so as I've kind of alluded to earlier in this video the modulation um, on this thing can be something very very formidable and something very very um, uh, challenging to dial in if you're looking for something subtle it's there but let's just let's start with the, let's start with just the basic sine wave we're not gonna run through all of the modes but let's start with the sine wave and and kind of showcase what I'm talking about. 
So you hear that, like um, the rate at, at low rates is really, really slow. Like the waveform size is crazy. And so with, the, with how incredibly strong the depth control on this thing is, like listen to that, that's like a roller coaster. Really dramatic. So, <laughs> here it comes. It's kind of cool, but it's, it's it's not what I want here. So, this is what this is the trick I have found for like if you want just boring traditional chorusing like I do. You want that depth really really low. And then you want that rate really, really fast. I'm telling you, I, I, I have it. I have like a really specific window that I like for this. Oh, and let's let's reintroduce that low pass filter. See, you hear what I'm talking about. Now we're getting into some really nice, lush chorusing. The triangle. Uh, let's actually jump into a couple of the ones that I really, really like. Ramp up can be really cool with a slightly more like goofy sounding uh, amount. But I have found that my, in my mind, the most useful ones, ones that I have latched onto the most are the, uh, probably the random step. There's something about the kind of randomization. Um, I've always been a big fan of uh, modulation where I feel like I can't hear like the, the peak in the trough. And I really like that about the random modulation mode. But uh, the purpose of the um, waveform engine in this thing is not just pitch control like that. You can actually change the destination of that modulation waveform engine. Um, you can have it send to your effect level, to your shift control, 
or to your delay itself. We are currently sending to delay, but let's go ahead and hit that alt button and change the destination to the effect level. So now our modulation should be actually, um, that waveform should be affecting the, the volume of our delay, the amplitude of our delay. Let's jump back to the sine wave so we can he really hear what's happening. we touched on earlier in this video, uh, that modulation rate can be tied in to your tap tempo, but as a separate subdivision of your tap tempo than your actual delay line. So I could have a dotted eighth delay with a 16th note uh, amplitude control um, amplitude control of my actual delay volume running underneath it, or in the same way, I could subdivide the actual pitch modulation as well, which is really interesting. Let's try one of the ramped modes. Oh, there's a lot of value in, uh, in, oh man, we should see if we can dial that up. We'll do it later. Um, I hope, I hope I remember to come back to this when we get into the web editor. Um, the ramp up, locking the modulation rate into your tap tempo could actually create a really cool side chaining effect. I really hope we don't forget to go back and do that. Oh, the last two engines on this thing before I forget and we, and, and we move on without touching on them. Uh, the last two engines on it are envelope and inverted envelope, which means uh, it is a it is an envelope that either drops off or comes up with your playing dynamics. Like that. So um, as long as I'm sustaining my note, those repeats will stay. As my note dies off, the repeats will go away. slow it down a little bit. Kind of cool. And then the invert, the inverse of that. Oh, the value here is super high. You could do some really interesting stuff with this. So I just set it up so that uh, when I stop playing, my repeats will come in, but they'll actually completely drop out while I'm playing. So. That's really interesting. And you can make it a lot more subtle, obviously. So now it just has like a subtle ducking effect. You can actually just have it so that uh, it will just tuck your delay signal back a little bit in your mix whenever you're playing and then let it rise back up uh, to kind of fill space when you're, when you're not playing. There's a really good, very practical application to being able to do that. Especially if you turn up your delay higher like that.
really cool. I hadn't, <laughs> that's the first time I've realized that that was an option. That's super cool. Now that, that, now that I think we've covered what I would consider the like delay basics and how they are applied to the Raster 2, let's start diving into some of the stuff that makes this pedal so unique as a train goes by. That's good timing. I really hope you guys can hear the train, otherwise this is awkward. <laughs> Let's start things off by talking about the delay configurations. And what I mean by that is that center, that, that, uh, that switch that is dead center on the pedal, um, the top, the, 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 the primary switch application is your direction and how the transposed uh, shift control is affected or implemented. Uh, but the secondary is three different ways that your delay lines can be configured in mono and in stereo. And we'll look at that, and then we'll look at some other ways in which you can kind of manipulate your stereo image on this pedal. Because I think that one of the highest value things about this pedal is how much flexibility you have over what you want out of your stereo image. Sometimes you want a good mono delay line so that you can get like a nice focused thing so the delay can feel like it's very part and parcel with your guitar tone itself. Sometimes you want that like hyper wide, hard left and right panned ping ponging. And sometimes you want something that kind of exists in that middle. Very few pedals give you all three of those options, let alone the amount of options in this pedal, but the raster has a ton of it. So we are currently in, in um, parallel delay lines. So technically what we're listening to, what we've been listening to this whole time has been two delay lines, but they are in phase and they are perfectly in line with one another. So it sounds mono, even though it's technically stereo, similar to how the ACS-1 doesn't sound like two guitars hard panned left and right, even though it's technically two different amplifiers. So as it stands right now, we've been playing in parallel. They are in parallel and identical to one another, so they don't sound stereo. Let's jump over to the ping pong. So for some things, there's a ton of value there. Like for me, I think if you're doing like a very nondescript tone shaping, vibe setting pad stuff, like with a lot of reverb and everything, I think that really wide repeats are really helpful for kind of letting the initial instantiation of your melody that you're introducing live in the middle, but then get brushed out to the side so that new melody as it arrives in the center can have its own sonic space. So let's let's dial up like a really big ambient thing and kind of hear how that ping ponging can be super useful. And again, that low pass filter is really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on, the other of the three kind of core delay line configurations that we have on display here is the in series mode, which feeds one delay line into the other. You have to be more careful about your feedback in this version because of uh, the stacking nature of it, you will get oscillations quicker. So this may not seem incredibly useful uh, in our current situation, but these are the three arrangements of our, uh, of our two delay lines, the three ways that they can be configured to interact with one another. And they, and that is just the building blocks of the other things you can do. Because as you can see, this pedal has a lot of sub menu options and a lot of them are left, right dependent. The ability to kind of prioritize a left channel over a right channel for different applications. And so you can kind of set these interesting left, right parameters for like your modulation destination or um, your, the amount of feedback can be prioritized to one side or the other and then depending on what mode of these three delay configuration modes you're in, you'll get different textures. So let's go back to our in parallel mode, AKA the most simple and straightforward and start looking at how you create other forms of stereo delay in this pedal. So we are back in parallel. And let's start looking at the delay directional controls, the, um, the alt delay function. So in that top right hand corner, we have our delay, which is our delay time. Uh, holding that alt button, you can start to move it a little bit to create some up to 30 milliseconds stereo widening effects. And then as you get further off to one side or the other, you start introducing actually uh, like actual delay ratio changes, you know, three to one, four to one, that kind of thing. So. Let's uh let's start let's start looking at how that will really really widen up your stereo image and kind of what that means for those three delay configurations. So this is what we, what is called the Haas effect. This is um this is a adding a slight up to thirty millisecond delay to one channel. Uh, over the other one to create a sense of stereo width without having to like add a bunch of extra like delay taps. So you're hearing that right channel more prevalently because it's coming first, but you can hear that it's on both sides still. And as you push it farther out to the side, you start getting proper multi-tap like subdivisions, dual delay, dual delay functionality. Okay, but within this context, like I said, let's let's go back and look at our different uh, delay configurations. This is the parallel. If you jump over to ping pong, you get a totally different version of that. It's interpreted completely differently because rather than the two delay lines being naturally alongside one, one another, 
they are they're alternating on left and right, and so you're getting those subdivisions cut up further. And if you want to further complicate things, you can do you can move over to that series mode that feeds the left channel into the right channel. Obviously, because they're feeding into one another, they, they move back to, to the, the center of the stereo field. But you can fix that in other ways, and we'll, we'll dive into some of that later. So we discussed earlier um, the concept of the Haas effect, where you uh, you you delay one side zero to thirty second thirty milliseconds in order to create a sense of stereo width like this. And I mentioned that, as you hear you're hearing it more pronounced on the right channel than you are on the left channel. So you can actually compensate for that because that right channel comes first. It's, it feels dominant when you listen to it. You can actually um, adjust the relative blend of the two channels uh, using the alt function on the blend control. Sure that you're not getting kind of like off kilter. I often find myself very frustrated listening to uh, Haas effect delay pedals in headphones because it just feels so uh, out of balance. And I really like the ability to kind of compensate for that in a in a way that works for me. very useful in my opinion. And you might have been noticing as we've been making some of these changes, you see the lights on the pedal start to adjust and everything. Something that's very, very useful, especially when you're dealing with these like tiny changes to um, balances and trying to make sure that everything stays in line with one another is the fact that um, the, the eight lights across the center of the pedal will light up when you're, when you're making these adjustments to let you know where in your left-right balance you are. So as we move that blend back to center, you'll see the lights, uh, the center two lights light up to let you know that you're back in balance. And we're in back to perfectly centered. <laughs> which is a great time for us to start looking into our different directional modes. So you've got forward and reverse, and both of them can uh, operate in their own unique ways. So we are in the center position, which is forward. And let's jump to reverse. I've often found that one of the biggest disappointments in so many delay pedals that offer a reverse is a lack of like good stereo reverse. For a long time, the only way to get a decent stereo image out of a reverse delay for me 
was to use the Empress Echo system using both modes set to left and right with different subdivisions. Well, you can do that or anything else on this one. Like, we're in reverse now. Let's jump to, to ping pong. that slight stereo width which I think is really great for reverse delay so you're not getting a bunch of like crazy subdivisions around you but that it's kind of sitting outside of your center channel so your guitar stays nice and present Let's take it to those kind of like inter interplaying subdivisions. This is this is hands down one of the best reverse delays I've ever I've ever played. It's it's absolutely the most versatile reverse delay I've ever gotten to use. All right, let's center back up. And like I said, there's three positions here. You've got forward, you've got reverse, uh, and then you will see that the other forward one is not a full loop, but a, but a half loop. And what that represents is um, you have the ability to run your, uh, because these delays all run into the shift that we we're about to dive into, um, it controls whether or not your forward delay or your reverse delay continuously reshifts every time it hits that engine or if it only hits the engine one time and then just kind of fades off bypassing the kind of that like feedback loop within the shift control. So uh, let's let's take a look at that what, what that means by going back to our forward facing delay. Forward delay. And let's introduce shift. So the shift is kind of the, it's, it's funny that it's taken us this long to get to what is effectively the kind of like selling point, I think, probably the, the, the thing that makes this pedal stand out so dramatically. And that shift is a modulation control in three different ways. You can shift uh, plus or minus 12 semitones, so like nice, wonderfully quantized from an octave down to an octave up style pitch shifting. You can detune, which I think, goes down like a harmonic fourth and up a third or something like that. Um, you'd have to check the manual. I'll, I'll probably drop text right now to let you know what it actually is. Uh, and then there's phase and frequency shifting, which kind of does some comb filtering and some other interesting stuff. Um, very noticeable at uh, lower delay times. Let's start off with transpose, which I will admit I tend to find the most useful because it's very musical and immediately, immediately helpful. So. Let's hear shift in the regular 
kind of like full circle forward. There we go. Shift. So here we go. This is a full octave up every time. Or you can go like down a fifth. But what if you don't want it to run all the way down? Well, that brings us to that half circle. So it only pitch shifts the one time, which can be incredibly useful if you want that melodic information, but you don't want that kind of runaway sparkle that pitch shifting up gives you. Very musical, very melodic. And again, you can you can reintroduce that that ping pong if you want. or that little subtle stereo width. And then this brings us back to that preset I made earlier, the, uh, the faux bass one. Center that delay back up. Let's go to full wet. And no delay time. And again, if we switched over to one of the other delay modes on here that like repeats forever, you hear that? You hear a lot more like junk in the tracking because it's pitch shifting all the way down as fast as it can. So let's stay in that normal single. Which means this pe pedal can also just be used as like a good old fashioned like good old fashioned octave pedal. And you can also do the octave up. And what I think is really, really useful with the octave up is to dial that blend way back, to dial the, the tone control way back, and then to introduce a little bit of that stereo width I actually think is really interesting. Add a bunch of add a bunch of reverb to that. That is better than any shimmer reverb you're gonna play.
I really love adding that width to create some differentiation between your your pitch shifted uh, tone and your and your dry tone. Super interesting. Okay, the camera died, uh, so I I, I don't want to like make you guys sit through like blackness while I talk through a bunch of parameter changes that you're not seeing. Um, but this is the thing that I stumbled on within the context of this pitch shifting. Very cool, very useful. Here's what I stumbled upon. So you've got your octave up. Seems very aggressive, right? Too, too much, too aggressive. Implement some stereo width. And then using the inverted envelope modulation engine targeted at the amplitude of your delay. You can now play, and then when you let off your attack, when your attack fades away, the delay repeats, the octave up wide delay repeats will then fade in. Let's add some more reverb. And uh, let's actually give those delay repeats um, their own kind of subdivisions. Fade that in really slowly is so fascinating. Okay, let's center all that stuff back up and start looking at our other shift options. Okay, we should have everything roughly back, back at center. Oh yeah, it's worth noting that transpose always transposes a little bit. We're now moving into the detune. So you hear that, it's like, so yeah, you can hear that that's very melodic. And what it is, is a fourth down to a major third up. So very specific use cases, obviously. But you're not here using um, this version for those kind of like quantized shifts like that. This is like a detune. So this is actually, in my opinion, the best way to get kind of like subtly modulated delay out of this pedal. So that's a perfect repeat, totally pristine. 
you turn on that shift with a little bit of detune introduced. You get a little bit of that beautiful flanged, phasing, chorusing kind of thing. Add a little bit of width really quick just because it sounds great. Let's turn our, uh, our tone back up. And even with this really subtle, subtle amount of uh, detuning, that's because we're on that half circle forward that only processes through the shift one time. If we, if we kick over to our center one that constantly does it, you will notice a much more gradual and noticeable melting. You hear it gets progressively more soupy and detuned. Versus that single. Like I said, I'm a big fan of a really subtle version of this. And lastly, we move into the frequency shift control, which is basically a plus minus 500 hertz frequency shift. Center that back up for like a nice mono modulation. Very lush, very pretty. Like I said, I think this one kind of shines at zero or close to zero for kind of some like really aggressive, like almost comb filtering kind of sounds. And you could reintroduce that, uh, that, that reverse envelope so that when you play, that modulation fades in. modulation, which is really cool.
And like I said, you've got three controls for the direction and shift interaction of your delay line. Again, if we jump back to that middle one, you're going to hear that modulation get a lot stronger as it goes because you're uh, feeding back through that shift multiple times. You can also control how much of that shift goes to either side. So we're back to kind of like a proper forward facing single shift. Let's get back to that single. As you, as you shift off to one side, it actually counterbalances the other channel. So because I'm going up on the right, I'm now going lower on the, on the, on the left. And this is where you start getting into the like value of the full manual because there is a whole chart for what, where each of these uh, controls go. But what's really helpful is they can either be linked together like this or in the web editor, which I swear we're going to get to, uh, you have the ability to set them independently from one another. So in like the detune rate modes, you could kind of detune them differently to get really complex overlapping filtered um, modulation. Or in this case, you could go, I want like a fifth up on one side and a fifth down or an octave down or a second down or something on the other side, which is really really something. Let's go super exaggerated. And again, you can give them separate subdivisions. And again, if we if we switch to that center one, they'll run away for forever. Real pleasant way up there in those high registers. That's why I keep that that low pass filter rolling. There we go. We've got it shifted slightly to offset the uh, the way that the shift is interacting with the um, with the detune. You hear that? Like it's a lot more like 
immediately noticeable as like a C6 sound. Switch back to stereo width. And the last thing I want to touch on before we jump into the editor, let's, let's get back out of our shift controls. And put our delay comfortably back in the middle. Let's jump back to that subtle modulation I like, but let's also assign it back to the delay itself. You can create stereo width using this instead of having to like offset the delays. Um, the rate and depth controls both have alternate functionality. The rate control uh, will actually change the will actually create like a phase difference between the left and right channels in terms of the like the LFO running the, the waveform you have running and the depth controls alternate function changes um, the balance of the depth of the modulation waveform between the left and the right channels which can be used to create some really interesting non-traditional forms of stereo width so let's look into that <laughs> that like left channel's got a more exaggerated version of the waveform right now. Let's make it really, really exhausted. So you can hear it's, the peaks and the valleys are much harder on the left right now. Again, so now we are stereo widening the actual delay line to the right, but prioritizing the modulation to the left. There's so many weird and interesting applications to this kind of thing. All right, centered back up and doing the, uh, the triangle wave right now. Okay, now let's use that alternate control for the rate that offsets the phase. gives a sense that the delay is staying in the middle, but the modulation is dragging out to the side, which is really interesting. Uh, it keeps that delay line focused, but allows you to use your stereo space uh, with other characteristics of what you're hearing.
Well, it's a hard pan that phased to one side. And then literally hard, hard uh, pan the depth to the other side. And now let's reassign that weird modulation engine back to the amplitude of the delay. Okay, I want to set them both back to the middle so that we can hear what happens as you kind of like prioritize the amplitude as the target of the modulation with those sub controls. We're jumping back to uh, the, the sine wave because it's going to be the easiest one. So that's offsetting the phase. And then offsetting the depth. That gets really, really bizarre feeling. perfect stereo tremolo on your delay line. And we're back to one of the kind of random LFOs. For fun, we've got we've got the phase offset, we have the depth offset. Let's offset the delay again. It's all over the place. It's really cool. Oh, you know what? Let's wrap this section up by also putting it in uh, ping pong. Just kind of a full width game over here.
So there's a lot going on there. And you know what the best part is? We're about to jump into the web editor that has more. I mentioned that center switch uh, before we transition, uh, that you've got reverse that feeds back into itself over and over again, like that center channel does for the forward delay. But then on the right side, you have um, forward delay going through, going through the shift control only one time, which I think is the ideal version of it. And I was really bummed that there wasn't a reverse one time, but there is, and it's in the web editor and or available via MIDI. Uh, I really wish that it was just on the pedal on its face. I think I would have, I would have vastly preferred to have that instead of reverse feeding back in forever. I just think that it's a lot more useful because, well, here, here's why. That flies away way too fast for me. Even on your slowest settings. I would really rather have the web editor uh, available version of that on the plate, but it's just in a bunch of my presets instead, which is also great. So let's jump over to the web editor and take a look at what's on display there. Okay, we are back and we now have our web app open. Uh, as you can see, we've got USB-B plugged into the raster. And we are looking at the, uh, in Chrome, we are looking at the um, editor for the raster. You've got your main page where you can make all your changes. You've got your control port where you can um, configure if you want the, 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 the TRS port in the center at the top to be uh, MIDI, remote, tap tempo, expression, etc. You've got your, as well as your ability to configure a Red Panda remote and a bunch of other expression parameter controls and whatnot. Over here you have what is incredibly useful, which is all of your presets. And you can load or save presets from anywhere to anywhere, which is really useful. So like, this is where I do all of my preset management. You can, you can literally hear like, we're on our like full reset. If I select two, we got that bass. Three. Four. Five. And six. And you can see all of it changing in real time on the pedal. And we're back to our standard startup. Okay, so we are back at our full reset here, and this is the edit page. Um, we're gonna look at some of the stuff that is only available on the edit page, some of the stuff that's super, super useful, and then we're just gonna dial up uh, like a really cool sound using this page and not touching the pedal itself, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get out of here, because I'm pretty sure we're at like the hour mark minimum right now. <laughs> so some of the stuff that's, that's really awesome to have access to here, the, a couple of things that are not available uh, on the pedal itself that you can get to here is one, it's really nice to be able to access shift and the secondary function, feedback and secondary function, like the secondary functions as immediately graspable here. The ability to unlink your left and right shift controls when you're doing those shift balances is really, really helpful and kind of can yield some really interesting results. You have the ability to invert your feedback, uh, which uh, is really only useful for some really like short delay time, similar to like some of the modulation stuff we were doing earlier. What's really cool is this is also where you have, let's go ahead and take our delay to its maximum in the current range, which is 800 milliseconds, which is, this is where you have access to that 3200 millisecond, three second or second and a half, 1600 millisecond reverse delay. Really cool, like tons, tons of delay, uh, tons of like uh, delay time on tap here, and can be really cool again in that, in that wide, uh, ping pong structure. Within here, you also have um, all of your delay subdivisions, which is really, really cool. Um, you've got everything from a whole note 
all the way down to a 128th note. And with each of those, you have access to a dotted and a triplet version of that. So like dotted quarters, triplet eighths, every, like all the way up to 128th notes, which is really, really cool. Right below that is where you also have access to your modulation note subdivision. And you, you also have a ton of those features as well. A ton of like everything from a whole from a whole note all the way up to a one a uh, one thirty second note. So let's do this. Let's dial in a quarter note. Let's dial in an eighth note subdivision. Let's dial in a quarter note tap tempo. So if you look over on our pedal, we can now tap in. And if we set our modulation destination to amplitude and crank up that, re that, uh, that rate and depth, at the, really just the depth. It is really cool to be able to lock those things in together. But I think the most useful thing that we have here in this environment is in those feedback modes, forward, forward, shifted once, reverse, and then reverse, shifted once. You can only get to that in this area. Let's kill our depth really quick. Our modulation rate and depth. Let's go to our longest delay time. Okay, so here we are. Um, and then the beauty of that is if you select transpose and you go you know, if you've got normal reverse and you go, and you decide you want to go down an octave, you've got. Oh, let's turn on. Let's turn on the transpose. Let's turn on latching really quick. You hear it just. Every pass drops further down. If you're going up, it gets really chaotic really fast. Let's kill the feedback for a second. There we go. But you get into that reverse shifted once. Stays, which is great. Let's create some of that stereo width. Roll off our tone. Hard our like hard shift our uh, our octave up and down off to the sides.
having access to all this stuff is so useful. And the best part about this, say, okay, I found what I like. I want this insanely long reverse delay. I want it shifted an octave down. I want weird, like asymmetrical panning on the, uh, on the repeats. So say this is the sound I want. I can just head on over to presets, select save, drop it into slot number 10. And then when I go over to load, we've got our startup delay. jump straight over to that crazy delay we just made. I guess lastly I should point out that you've got your input level controls, your mono stereo configuration stuff, your bypass modes, you've got auto DSP analog, analog plus effects level, and a kill dry option. If you want real like textury stuff. You, you can change your MIDI control, your MIDI channel, and your MIDI clock on and off, and trails on and off. I think, I think that's everything. I think we have covered about everything we could endeavor to cover here. That's everything. Thank you for joining. Uh, I hope you liked this incredibly exhaustive deep dive that I don't even, I'm afraid to know how long this video ends up being. Um, you know what? If you made it to the very end, congratulations. You you get rewarded with the only plug you're ever going to hear in one of these videos because I don't, I don't do self-promo like for anything. If you like this, if you find this useful, if you want to ask me questions about specific aspects of this pedal or anything we've done in this video, um, I really encourage you to hit that Patreon link down below. Join my Patreon, join my Discord. That's the best place to talk to me about gear, for real. So uh, thank you, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see you next time.